More importantly, I need you to start with step one. Step one on any journey, the most important thing you need to do is figure out the Yesterday was such an amazing day. I went through all of my client check-ins and every single one of them crushed their weekly goals. And I can't tell you how stoked I was to see this. Not only are they seeing amazing results, crushing their goals, but the most important thing to me is that they're enjoying the process. And this is exactly why clients love to stick with us and stick with the process and continue to see great results. Now I must say, they're not perfect. This doesn't happen all the time. In fact, more often than not, there's at least one person that has a rough week or has something happen in their week that is unpredictable. Remember, we're human. I can't expect perfect. You shouldn't expect perfect. But this week was particularly great. And it was a reminder to me of why we do what we do and how we do things in order to make sure that the people that we work with enjoy the process. Because at the end of the day, if you hate what you're doing, if you don't enjoy any of it, it's not going to be sustainable. And that's why the approach we take is so important to me. Why I've spent the last six years shifting, changing, adjusting, and perfecting the exact process we use to give our clients results. Because more than anything, the last thing I want our clients to do is to absolutely hate the process or the journey that they're on. And so the number one reason that clients love working with us is the fact that we don't make them do anything. We don't make them do anything. What we do is we help them figure out the things that they are number one willing to do and able to do in their daily lives. When clients sign up with us, one of the first steps we do is we take a deep dive into their daily lives. We take a deep, thorough assessment into what they do already. Now, some of those things are amazing already. Some of those things are habits that they want to stop. Some of those things are things that are non-negotiables that they need to have in their lives to maintain their happiness. And ultimately, our goal is to enhance that. Not to take away, not to change or make that force them to quit or stop doing anything, but to add little details and minor shifts to improve their already lifestyle. Now, I'm sure with your lifestyle right now, you're probably doing a few things that you're like, I need this every week to make me happy. Whether that's getting your nails done, getting your hair cut, getting, going to dinner with your family, having that drink with your friends and having that social hour where you can really connect and dive deep with the people that you love. Those are some examples of non-negotiables our clients have. And ultimately, we want to make sure they can still do those things and still have those things in their life. And ultimately, what we really want to do is enhance the things you're already doing to make your life easier, but more importantly, to make sure you can see results that you're looking for along the way. So after we take this thorough assessment, we really focus on figuring out that one thing. There's typically one little detail about your lifestyle. Maybe it's your stress management. Maybe it's your sleep quality. Maybe the biggest thing is your nutrition and just not having any balance. Maybe it's something along those lines. Maybe you're not moving every day. Maybe you just need to have a workout routine that you actually like and that you can actually stick to. Most importantly, we find that one thing. We find the one thing that's going to have the biggest impact. I don't know about you, but I played sports my entire life. And on my football team, there's one thing my coach always repeated. You're only as strong as your weakest link. When I was playing defense, I was playing linebacker, and the quarterback on the other team would always throw the ball to the weakest player on the field. If we had a really bad safety or a really bad corner, they were always going to throw that direction. For soccer, if we had one side of the field that was a little bit weaker, a little bit less skilled, they always came down that side to score goals. My point of this is, is that if you fix the weak link, everything else is going to improve. So find that one thing. We help you do that. But you can also do this yourself. This isn't me trying to convince you you need to work with us. This is me trying to give you insight to what we do so you can steal it and go do it on your own. 
And if you want our help, great, I can help you. But more importantly, I want you to leave this video, this podcast, and be able to go take action. Go implement things that you can actually use for your own progress, for your own results. So back to what I was saying. Find that weak link and make it a strength. So if you never work out, begin resistance training. That is going to be the most valuable thing for your muscle gain, for your metabolism, for your overall shaping and sculpting of your body. Now, maybe for you, you work a nine to five job, you sit at a desk all day, so maybe getting steps in is extremely challenging. So an example of what we do for clients that have a hard time getting steps in is finding ways to implement those steps into their life already. So maybe going to the gym for an hour and walking on a treadmill is unrealistic which I wouldn't want to do that, so I wouldn't expect you to. But what we do is we help them find ways to fit those steps into their day. For example, I have a client that works an hour away from where she lives. So not only does she have to drive an hour to work, work eight to nine hours sitting at a desk, and drive sitting an hour in traffic on the way back home, which prevents her from moving all day, we have to find ways to get more steps in. So one of the first things we did is I had her adjust where she parks. Typically, she would try to find a spot as close to the door at her work as possible. And so what we did instead is I had her park on the furthest end of the parking lot. Now, all that did, sure, it took her two more minutes to walk into the office. But more importantly, it added 2,000 steps to her day. Just walking into the office and walking out of the office, going to her car at lunch and driving, walk, parking there again and walking back into the office. So there's about four times in the day she's walking that distance and that's adding about 2,000 steps to her day. On top of that, she was also a little dehydrated. She wasn't drinking that much water. You want to know another thing we did is I made her just increase the amount of water she was drinking. So I recommended a 32 ounce bottle. So that way she would have to fill it up twice throughout the day. Our goal was to consume three of those a day. And you want to know something crazy that happened? Not only did she get more steps having to fill it up, she also got more steps because she had to use the restroom more often. She was having to go pee. And a little thing that I learned by asking her was I actually found out the restroom at her office was right behind her desk. Well, every time she had to use the restroom, she was only getting about 10, 15 steps because it was right behind her. So one of the easiest shifts we made was every time she stood up to use the restroom, I gave her two options. She either had to walk a lap around the office back into the restroom or one of the other things she did is on the second floor of the building, there was another restroom. So I had her walk all the way to the stairs, go up the stairs, walk to the other side of the office, use the restroom up there, walk back down around. Again, added another 2,000 steps for a day. So those two things added 4,000 steps. Well, just getting ready for work in the morning and cooking dinner at night, she was getting the other three to 4,000 steps. That alone helped her begin to get 8,000 steps on a daily basis. So without changing anything else, she started to lose weight. So let me ask you, would that be hard to implement into your life? Would that be hard to implement into your daily routine? Parking a little bit further, bringing a water jug to work that you're going to fill up a few times, taking a little bit more time to walk to the restroom at work. I have a feeling, just like this did for her, those little things might actually make you more productive. So instead of sitting at your desk, burnt out, frustrated, and low energy, you know what's crazy is these little walks she had in her day actually gave her a little energy boost. They actually made her more productive at work. They made her a better employee, but more importantly, made her feel better about herself. And also the results she was seeing, the little bit of extra weight loss we were achieving, improved her quality of life, improved her energy, improved her happiness, and her confidence because she knew she was moving in the right direction. So you see, my point of telling you this is that there is so many ways that you can improve the rate at which you are changing your body. And it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be challenging. Over 50% of the 550 clients I've worked with have worked desk jobs. 
So I can tell you confidently, I have experience working with people who have this exact same situation. Another one of my clients, for example, had a hard time either meal prepping on Sundays because those were family days or spending time with their family all day. They didn't want to sit and cook for a few hours to prep meals for the week. But something they did do as a family was make dinner every night. And so the little hack I gave her was that every night when they make dinner, just make your dinners a little bit bigger. So that way for the next day, not only her, but also for her husband, they had meals to bring to work the next day. That little hack alone, number one, helped her hit her actual protein intake because that was something she was struggling with, but also helped her stay on track with her goals, avoid the break room and the snacks and the the foods that weren't going to help her reach her goals. Those little details, I'm telling you, make the biggest difference. Now, I can dive into a lot more of the nuances. I can dive into a lot of the other steps we get into. But more importantly, I need you to start with step one. Step one on any journey, the most important thing you need to do is figure out the weakest link. Find the one thing. Find the one thing in your lifestyle that is holding you back. The one thing that is your weakest link, that is allowing the opponent to score on you easily. The one thing that's stopping you from continuing moving forward on this journey. And if you can find that one thing, and you can find little ways to tweak the lifestyle you're already living to focus on improving that one thing, I can promise you, your results will come faster, your results will come easier, and they will be more sustainable. So if there's anything you leave here with today, I want you to know you can do this, number one. You can implement it into your life. You can enjoy it, just like all of our clients do. You just have to find that one thing. And if you know the one thing at this point in time, and you're not sure how to adjust or shift or modify your lifestyle to make it fit perfectly without having to sacrifice your happiness, just shoot me a message on Instagram, tell me what that one thing is, and I'll give you any of the pro tips I have to help you take action and to help you move in the right direction. So ultimately, I wanted to keep this one short and sweet. I hope you found a ton of value in this. And if you haven't already, please take a second to subscribe to the podcast. And aside from that, I hope you have the absolute best day of your life. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.